I've been attending uh, dialogue groups off and on for a few years, and um, I find it quite challenging. I, I feel good after I attend them, um, but I find it quite challenging to quiet the mind during those um, meetings. And I'm wondering, is, is that typical? It seems like the work really has to be done, as you say, in silence. And, um, you know, in one's own meditation. And um, it seems like it's getting, in some ways, easier to do that. Um, before it was more challenging times crises times would motivate me to 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 do that um, to do to do meditation um, to as you, as you talked about see look at the conditioning um, you mentioned guilt earlier and the video what is guilt I think in a nutshell really talks about a meditation that Krishnamurti talks about um, and yet it, it, in some ways it seems like one really can hit a block in that process and, I, and perhaps you will talk about that more in the, in the following meetings um, but um, Is this kind of the process we're going through? I mean, it, it just seems like in dialogue, it's good to talk about these things. And yet, really, the work has to be um, kind of individual, you know, quieting the mind, seeing these things, these conditioning. What do you think is really important? Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, like for any deep dialogue to happen, I often share that, you know, certain qualities of the mind are necessary. And without these quality or prerequisites, uh, a dialogue is only a discussion or a debate. And dialogue is something entirely different from debate or discussion. In a debate or discussion, what is more important? Who is right or who is correct? And whose opinion is right? And this is what we are generally taught in the society, in our education system. But the process of dialogue is entirely different. In a dialogue, the primary concern is to discover together what is true and what is false. Not who is true or who is false. You know, there is a shift. And let us look at it together in our day-to-day -day life, in our daily consciousness. What are those false things? What are the fears? What, what is the suffering? What are the guilts? What are the deeper causes, cause of this guilt? So all these deep questions, they are investigated into this process of dialogue. And for this, the, a certain quality of silence is required. The quality of silence and the quality of affection, these are very important. And they are not separate for me. A silent mind will naturally be affectionate. Because what blocks affection and compassion is the noise of the mind, is the noise of my opinions, is noise of my judgments, noise of my ideas. All, they block, all these things block this flow of compassion, the flow of love. And the, when, when the mind is quiet, still, it is able to look deeply into things. It is able to listen deeper aspect of a question. And this silence is not opposite of words. I can enter into a dialogue out of this quality of silence and love. 
I can share, I can talk from that ground. So this, uh, this talking, sharing even through words can happen from the ground of silence and love. And it, it may also happen from the ground of noise. The quality will be different. So one can enter into a dialogue with speaking or without speaking. That is not the great issue. How we are connecting to a question, how I am looking, what is the quality of my looking, what is the quality of my presence. Actually, my presence explores. My presence is investigating, whatever I am. So, I am meeting myself in every situation. That's why every deep dialogue is a process of self-inquiry. It's a self self-knowing process. So, I share whatever I am in every dialogue, in every relationship, in every movement. So, that's why this is so important. This is how we learn about oneself. As we watch whatever is happening, whatever is getting manifested into these dialogues, whether through words or without words, 